You know, I've been hearing this recent discourse lately since the launch of Sonic Superstars in late last year, which goes along the lines of, hey, Sonic Superstars may be an inferior Sonic game in just about every aspect, but at least it's more original than Sonic Mania. Or an even worse take I've seen is the idea that Sonic Superstars is flat out better than Sonic Mania because it has more original stages and bosses. And that's got me thinking, why are y'all doing Sonic Mania so dirty like this? No, but in all seriousness, this isn't really a popular opinion I've seen online. Just a few outliers that have gotten me wanting to make a video discussing the topic, as I actually think it's a pretty interesting conversation to have. After all, Sonic Mania is one of the most popular and successful Sonic games to date, and I feel like it's very important to explore the reasons behind that once in a while, as well as quell any potential revisionist history about the game. I've seen the Twitter discourse. So this, in turn, will be a pretty simple video with a pretty simple premise. I will go through every aspect of Sonic Mania and Superstars and compare the two of them side by side. Things such as the music, art aesthetics, boss battles, level design, and overall impact that each of the respective games have had in the gaming landscape. Coming from the lens of a game designer myself, I feel like there's a lot of insight I can offer with my newfound perspective. Also, it's just really fun to dissect and analyze Sonic as a gaming franchise in my opinion. Okay now, that's enough waffling from me. Let us explore exactly why Sonic Mania is held in such high regard and why Sonic Superstars failed to meet expectations that many people would have hoped. And right off the bat, we start off with a category that I personally cannot offer much insight into on a technical level. Musical tastes are pretty subjective, but I think I could say for most of us that Sonic Mania absolutely blasts superstars out of the water when it comes to the sheer quality of the tracks for its game. The song you hear me playing in the background right now, Lagoon City Act 2, yeah, this is the best track in Superstars. It only goes downhill from here. Okay, that's a bit harsh. We still have bangers in the game like Sand Sanctuary, The Special Stage Zone, and Speed Jungle, just to name a few. But overall, while not completely horrid like some people would like you to believe, most of the songs in Sonic Superstar are just a tad mid at best and actively hurts to listen to at worst. I especially hate Fang the Sniper's theme in this game. I mean, what did they do to my mans? And this all gets rendered a moot point when you realize that songs like Lagoon City Act 2 were the absolute standard for Sonic Mania soundtrack. A song of this variety would be considered pretty average among the absolute masterpieces we got in this game. I mean, do I really have to remind any of y'all? We have Studioopolis. Press Garden Act 2. And Raj Sloon Act 2, just to name a few of my favorites. Most of the Act 2 themes for Sonic Mania are complete bops that garner over a million views per track on whatever website they're posted to, and don't even get me started on some of the boss themes for the game. Really though, I feel as though this isn't worth spending that much time over, as most people can easily agree, Sonic Mania slams Sonic Superstars when it comes to the music department, and it's not even close. I will say however, one of the main reasons why most people feel a little dissatisfied with Sonic Superstars' OST is because of this really annoying trend that Sonic Team tries to do whenever they want to make a Sonic game feel classic, quote unquote. They always try to have the music mimic that iconic synthesizer that so well defined the classic games from 1 to 3 and Knuckles, 
and they've been so obsessed with this motif for some reason that they had to go and ruin a majority of the classic Sonic songs for Sonic Forces classic stages. This is only one of the many reasons why people hated that game, by the way. But that's neither here nor there. My reason for bringing this up is because Superstars falls victim to the same exact motif that ruined most of Sonic Forces' classic Sonic songs, and a mostly underrated OST, I might add. If you notice, Sonic Mania doesn't try to do this, even though it arguably has a vastly more faithful retro art aesthetic with its art and animations, as well as sound effects. Sonic Mania's music composition chooses to utilize real sounding and high quality instrumentation for most of its tracks, and it sounds fantastic as a result. Sure, the game tries to mimic that style of retro composition for its Act 1 themes initially, but for mostly Act 2s in Sonic Mania, all you hear is the music go full throttle and put to full use that HD sound chip that most games have the luxury of using nowadays. This not only provides us with some of the best Sonic tracks known to date, but it also creates this brilliant contrast between the old and the new, as the player will be able to hear a semblance of what once was in the Act 1 themes for Sonic Mania, and then get completely blown out of the park in Act 2 when they witness the true capability and ultimate evolution that Sonic Mania has come to perfect in this retro style in both music and gameplay. Also, most of Sonic Generation's classic Sonic levels don't do the synthesizer thing, and as a result, the classic Sonic music in that game sounds normal, and not like a chicken choking on fried shit. Okay, I kind of lied a bit about this part. This is going to be a mixture of like art and aesthetics with level design, because you can't really separate the two. That being said, this is actually a topic I could talk about quite a bit since it's right up my alley. When Sonic Superstars first got announced, the first thing that came to my mind for me was the idea that this was essentially going to be a proper expansion from the level design of Sonic Generation's classic Sonic levels. And while I can say there definitely is some of that in the game, ultimately, Superstars falls short of that standard by just a little while Mady, on the other hand, once again blows it out of the park. I think the main reason for this is twofold. Number one, Sonic Superstars lacks the extremely reactive and dynamic environment that so defined Generations classic Sonic levels. That game fully took advantage of the fact that they were now designing in a 3D environment, rather than a 2D one, even though the movement was still fundamentally two-dimensional. Because of this, Generations was able to have much more dynamic level design with backgrounds and environmental details that routinely played a role in the progression of the game's stages. Things like the gun truck constantly harassing the player in City Escape, or in Crisis City with the giant fire tornado constantly shifting and moving stage hazards making it harder for the player to platform and navigate, or a fan favorite level in that game, Rooftop Run, with the iconic tower climb as you had to stop the blimp with the clock tower crashing into it. All of Sonic Mania stages, while beautiful and dynamic in their own right, could not possibly hope to replicate this feeling because they're simply limited to a 2D space. And that's why I had such hope for Superstars, as I believe it will be able to take advantage of this and push its level design to even further heights. These levels in Sonic Generations are so memorable specifically because they mess with the level design in unique ways that are distinct and interesting to play through. It also helped that most of these levels were simply stunning to look at. I mean, look at these visuals. This is a decade old game by the way, and while Superstars often does feature these background elements, often launching the player directly into and out of the foreground, it, in my opinion, doesn't really fully capture the sheer creativity on display with Generations classic Sonic stages, having played through all of them recently. And when it comes to visuals, I mean, I don't even want to try to compare the two. I don't mean to rag on the graphics too much, especially since I know the Switch version of this game is trash, but come on Sega. One of the main aspects of a satisfying level in video games that I often hate to admit is true is the art and aesthetics. Very often, if a level in a platformer has very good music and art, it can sort of make up for and overcome any shortcomings in the gameplay and level design department. And in the case of Superstars, I feel like the game's graphical fidelity is leaving much to desire and actually messes with people's enjoyment of the game. After all, how can you truly sink yourself into a game's world and atmosphere if you're constantly brought out of the experience due to something like a poor frame rate or questionable lighting and texture work. I mean, come on, some of these levels don't even have a drop shadow to follow under the player when they're running. Again, this is a problem that Sonic Mania often doesn't have an issue with due to the fact that it's a really gorgeous game with a great art style and animations. While Superstars, on the other hand, 
has a 3D aesthetic that often leads to the game looking quite stiff and robotic at times. Seriously though, was I the only one hoping that the game looked exactly how the 3D trailer's animation did? I mean, just look at how vibrant and full of life this trailer looks. This, all the while, Sonic Mania takes full advantage of its retro pixel art aesthetic and puts it to amazingly great use as the game crafts vibrant environments and background details that will leave any player completely awestruck. With every level in the game having such a memorable color palette distinct from everything else and almost everything in those levels moving and animating to some degree. I know this may seem completely tangential to the topic of level design, but this stuff is very important, you know? It all contributes to fully immersing the player into your game's world and levels. Look, I hope I'm making sense with all of this, that I'm not just rambling. Anyway, Sonic Mania's level design, while not perfect, has this seamless ebb and flow to it that basically allows the game to play itself in some regards. What I mean by this is that all of the gimmicks and design elements that can be found in all of Mania's levels are as smooth as butter and rarely distract from the overall gameplay of Sonic's control, and other characters for that matter. Let me give you an example. In Chemical Plant Act 1, the level design is basically a rehashed combination of both the Act 1 and 2's from Sonic 2. There are some segments that are made easier and less annoying, but other than those small changes, the level is pretty forgiving in terms of just letting the player vibe and go at their own tempo, while slowly introducing more difficult platforming segments in order to prepare the player for later levels down the line. And then Act 2 comes in. It starts off the player with an instant easy to understand gimmick that's not intrusive in the slightest. You turn the toxic goop into a bouncy spring, the light goop is a soft spring, and the green goop is a stronger one. The room where they introduce this gimmick is also a little forgiving, as even a player that's simply holding right to win will most likely accidentally fall on this syringe after falling from this ramp. Anyways, after that, the level basically goes completely bananas with the player's agency. Those pipes in Act 1 that automatically took you to a predetermined location? Yeah, well you can control those now, and the goop that slowly carries you into the air can be freely jumped from. It's all very engaging and brilliant level design, and one of the reasons why Mania is such a hard game to put down at times. The game is always constantly introducing and throwing new stuff towards the player, and it's all very fun to interact with. This is no doubt the result of countless hours of playtesting and level tweaking, but my point still stands. Superstars, on the other hand, has many gimmicks in the game that feel, well, gimmicky. They noticeably leave players questioning what they're supposed to do, or in worst cases, actually detract from their overall enjoyment of the game. <clears throat> I'm talking about you, Press Factory. This is not even to mention any of the bugs and glitches that I've seen people come across while playing the game. I'm not saying Sonic Mania is perfect in this department, but comparatively, it's one of the most polished Sonic games to date, which is not saying that much now that I think about it. Owing to a pretty uncontested opinion, the bosses themselves. I don't really think that this needs much explanation, it's a pretty undisputed fact that Mania has more satisfying and better designed boss fights than Superstars. I mean, most platformers do to be honest. One of my biggest pet peeves in game design, for boss fights specifically, is the dreaded hurt window when the player is actually allowed to play the game and finally hurt the boss. I don't know why, but whenever games do this, it kind of just feels like the developers are padding time and stalling the player out in order to create an artificial sense of longevity or tension. When in reality, all it really does is annoy the player and make the game much more boring to slog through, and it makes replaying your bosses extremely tedious as well. Not to mention in speedrunning, it's always a potential run killer if the player doesn't exploit through it as well. It's just a bad idea, don't, don't do it. Unless there's a specific narrative purpose. Bam. Back on topic, Sonic Mania's boss battles on the other hand are quick, to the point, and don't waste any of the player's time with scripted cutscenes in between each individual hit of the thing. I mean, just look at this. Not to say Mania doesn't have its fair share of these two, but they are way toned down in comparison. So much so, that a casual playthrough through some of these bosses and superstars could take just as much time as an individual level would in each respective game. I mean, yikes. On top of that, I haven't really even mentioned how some of these bosses are actually pretty difficult and that dying on them often restarts the entire sequence, making an already long boss just extremely excruciating and exhausting to get through. And those boss themes do not help the matters. I mean, come on, some of these are just egregious.
seriously, who's the one responsible for cooking up these songs? They barely made it out of the oven. All of this to say that Sonic Mania's bosses are short, sweet, and completely satisfying to play through, save for a few certain picks that I wasn't that fond of. They all have really easy to understand gimmicks and weak spots that the player can easily latch onto, and they never overstay their welcome in the slightest. Hell, I wish some of them just lasted a bit longer so I could hear those amazing boss themes. Before I end this video off, I want to address a common critique that I started this video off with in regards to the extremely one-sided debate about Sonic Superstars and Mania. As I said before, the idea is that even though Sonic Mania has superior level design and boss fights in almost every regard, at least Superstars has more original level themes and overall aesthetics. And to that I have to say, so? Sonic Mania may rip a ton of stuff from the other classic Sonic games, but its revamped level design and approach to its gameplay is so refreshing and new that each of the Act 2s of each zone might as well be their own stages altogether. Superstars does indeed have more original zones than Mania, but how many of those zones are a simple rehash in aesthetics and art from past classic Sonic games? I think I saw a comment in one of my past polls that said it greatly. Superstars feels like Sega's own attempt at trying to make a new Super Mario Bros. You have the standard grassy level, the desert level, the foresty area, the icy area, etc, etc. I will admit I'm being a little cherry picky with these examples, as all of these levels feature unique enough side gimmicks to not be complete one-to-one -one ripoffs. But when you compare these to the original levels that Sonic Mania had to offer, man it's like night and day. A bustling cityscape with a retro studio vibe that throws back to the early arcade aesthetic, often hiding many easter eggs that reference Sega's iconic past, only for it to turn into a full-on Broadway show with some casino elements and a full theatrical stage in the background. A mechanical printing press factory with glossy textures and a 90s architectural aesthetic, only for it to be revealed that the whole thing was built within the confines of a gorgeous, sprawling winterscape filled to the brim with bright pink sakura flowers and a cool eastern influence architectural design to fit the garden's unique feel. Or how about the fact that Mania completely brought back to life that old discarded desert level from Sonic 2 and completely reimagined it as this over-the-top western with wanted posters, seltzer platforms, and a boss that references other seemingly discarded Sonic elements to fit with the overall theme. And the final level that feels like an oppressive 1984-esque cityscape with a dystopian tone and a sci-fi aesthetic to make it feel otherworldly. Ending off with a four-part stage that combines the Sistine Chapel and Royal Renaissance art motif with the iconic Eggman base and mechanical takeover vibe that so defines the last level of each of these games. Sonic Mania may only have four original stages, but I argue that each of these four are so packed to the brim with style and inspired art aesthetics that the quality more than makes up for the lack in quantity. For me, even the mere idea of giving a full classic Sonic experience in the style of Mania, with all original levels of the same quality as these four right here, simply makes me salivate at the thought. So yes, while Superstars does have more original levels than Sonic Mania, that in of itself does not make up for what I believe, it's lack in quality and polish that Mania has so readily raised the standard to be. In conclusion, play Sonic Mania after playing Sonic Superstars. The overall difference in quality might shock you. Hell, just replay through all the Sonic Generation classic Sonic stages and you'll get my point. Making a good 2D platformer is no easy feat. I of all people should know that for sure, but I hope that you can see from my 1 to 1 comparisons in this video that while Superstars may be able to get the ball rolling, Sonic Mania simply knocks it out of the park when it comes to its presentation and gameplay. And I find it absolutely criminal that one of these games at launch was a full one $60, while the other one was a humble $20. Especially when the game that has a third of the pricing has arguably a much better experience to offer. Proving to be at least that the quality of a video game is definitely not determined by its price tag. I hope you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe if you did, and have a nice day.